Hi everyone, it's Andrea and I'm here today with the second part of my Marilyn scrapbook flip through. So this is volume two. This is the first scrapbook I ever created when I first started collecting Marilyn clippings back in 1990. Um, the last video was like 20 minutes long. I'm hoping this won't be as long because I won't be rambling on about how much um, and how much how I created the original scrapbooks and, and so on. So we'll get started in it straight away. So again, it's from WH Smith's and again, we have a lovely portrait of Marilyn. Let's try and get it centered nicely for you. There we are, taken during the making of Seven Year Itch in New York. So the first articles we have are, there are two here. The very first one says, sorry, I'm in the wrong way. Um, uh, Marilyn's bed bug to trap Bobby Kennedy. So this is one of the scandal ones. And then uh, there's a bit about uh, Jerry Hall, who was, um, at the time, uh, in 19, was uh, performing as Marilyn in Bus Stop as Cherie. And this carries on onto this page where uh, they just say she's just not Monroe. And at the time she was uh, married to Mick Jagger, so hence the sorry Mick bit. And with that we have a few um, film bits and pieces, so a uh, bit about Bus Stop, a bit about Hollywood Legends Beyond the Legend, a bit about Niagara and so on. And various other little bits and, and pieces. And the next one is a huge double page spread which says Mar at last Marilyn's dream comes true and this is about her estate. Um, when she died, she left part of her estate to her psychiatrist um, back in the year before she met Greenson, whose name was Marion Chris. And Marion Chris uh, left her share of the estate to the Anna Freud Centre. Marion's stipulation was that it be used for the children's charity of Marion Chris's choice. Um, so Anna Freud inherited that part of the estate and uh, it went to a place called the Anna Freud Children's Centre. It's now called something else. Um, and that was in, in London, so it's about that. And there's some lovely pictures of her with the, with the child, the boy, Christopher Morley, in uh, Something's Got to Give, and some pictures of herself as a child at the bottom. The next one was a, a magazine, a People article magazine from 1990, April 29th, called The Legends Live On, Marilyn <coughs> and James Dean, as you've never seen them before. Um... Basically, literally just talking about the legends of both Marilyn and James Dean and about uh, you know, people who love Marilyn because um, they were still some of the top earners at the time um, bringing in more than, than people like um, uh, Kylie Minogue and Jason Donovan uh, and, and so on and, and more famous and popular than these people. So and they're, they're the highest earners and a bit about her estate, a bit about some Marilyn fans including Madonna, what they might have looked like as they grew older and what they would be doing um, at the ages of 64 and 59. Then there's one, a bit more of a scandal sheet one which is called Marilyn's Secret Daughter which is absolutely rubbish because uh, this was uh, absolute uh, nonsense that was perpetuated by Ted Jordan. We're not going to go and give him much time because, well, not worth it. Next page is about a TV Guide article about Bus Stop. It was, must have been shown, yeah, it was shown on Sky Movies um, back in August 1990. And of course, there's a, another bit about Jerry Hall and about how uh, the, the position, the, the film was groundbreaking for Marilyn at the time. Then we have um, a little article called Spook by Marilyn. A uh, music company came in that uh, they're being haunted by her since they bought one of her bathing suits. <laughs> Sounds like publicity to me, excuse me, I'm a bit sniffly. Um, some information on the estate again, turning things down. Then the next uh, one is the TV Times, September 1990, 20 things Marilyn Monroe didn't know about Marilyn Monroe. Um, in fact, she would have known most of them because uh, so, well, she would have known some of them uh, because she, certain things running up because there's, uh, you know, 
But yeah, some of the things that she wouldn't have known, like um, how much she was worth when she died, uh, some of the information um, that's come out since, the, the music used at her funeral, she thought she wasn't there. Um, but number 20, Marilyn loved animals. During her later years, Frank Sinatra gave her a white poodle named Math. Frank's secretary, Gloria Lovell, inherited the dog when Marilyn died. Well, look, well Marilyn knew she got a dog from Sinatra. She wouldn't know what happened to the dog when it died, however. And there's a few little bits here. Um, fishnet flash, just because it had a nice picture of Marilyn. Mailer's Women, about Norman Mailer and his stuff. Twinkle Hasn't Faded. This was about the rediscovery of the Something's Got to Give footage and the, the documentary uh, that, that came out at that time. Lovely, lovely, lovely documentary. Still, still worth watching today. And then a, a blonde bimbo named Fiona Wright wants to become Marilyn Monroe, so she's had surgery. I have no idea who she is. The next page is another Ted Jordan article. The actual top picture is not Marilyn, but he was. Uh, they were claiming it was. We got homing in on Marilyn. So this is the first of a, a lot of articles of various stars. I say that. Um, Dressing up as Marilyn. This one was Emily Simmons, who was played Marilyn in the TV uh, soap Home and Away. Um, dressed up as Marilyn for some reason. Who knows why? Then we have a lot of lookalike information down here. So we've got Pauline Bailey, different pictures of her. Um, one called Laura Lyley and one called uh, Jackie. I don't know who it is, Jackie. But there we go. The next uh, page is a cover shot from U Magazine. U Magazine is a Sunday supplement that comes with the Mail on Sunday. Uh, bring on the invasion of the body stashes, bring on the Marilyn girls, and it has a cover fit photo of Pauline Bailey. And then inside we have a double page spread of uh, various Marilyn lookalikes with the heading gentleman for the real thing. And it tells you about why they like her and how they became lookalikes, why they became lookalikes and so on. Some do it professionally, some do it for fun. Um, a little bit about Kay Kent. And then at the end there is a little bit telling you about each one. So for instance, Carolyn Cortez, actress Susie Sylvie, actress, tell you that. Laura Lee runs a restaurant. Carolyn Patton, professional full-time Marilyn. Jackie Burdett, professional designer for Bella magazine. She did become a Marilyn professionally for a while. Lynn Shepard, telephonist. Megan Stringer, Pax Diamant Diamante neck necklaces in a factory. Someone who calls herself Norma Jean, who's married and a part-time hairdresser. Pauline Bailey, full-time Marilyn. And Antonia Moore, who's a glamour model. And yeah, so I love articles like that. And then we've got uh, chat, June 1st, 1991. Marilyn, she didn't kill herself. Uh, one man who reeled the new Marilyn uh, reveals the truth behind the legend. And it was, um, I want to say it's Trevia. Yeah, Bill Trevia, the, the dress designer who designed this, uh, this these two costumes here. This one and, and the gold lame and the 17 inch dress. Then on the back we have Fury over Madonna with Mar Marilyn. Madonna, because she uh, copied the Bert Stern photos. He himself has reshot them with Lindsay Lohan, DM me. Um, we have an advert for the first of the Bradford Exchange collector's plate. This one says a uh, bosom pile of, of Marilyn and this just tells how she posed for the nude pictures in very small details. This one is Downfall of the Tarnished Goddess. I'm actually going to lift it up slightly because there is some light shining on it. Um, so it's the 30th anniversary now and this is just about, again, her films, how she started, the her alleged affairs and then things like Elton John's Candle in the Wind and Andy Warhol's pictures of her and so on. Uh, the next page is uh, rumours about her and Jack Kennedy. There are a lot uh, by this. This was a book by Thomas Reeves. And I think it's, it's a book about Jack rather than Marilyn because I don't have it, so it's not about Marilyn. And then there's a bit about Marilyn, Mafia and Frank, Happy Birthday Mr. President and so on. Next one is the claim that Joseph Jasker, who was one of her photographers, made that she had six toes. Um, and it does look like there's six toes, but it is generally believed to be a clump of sand. 
Um, main reason because there are photographs taken before this picture where she clearly only has five toes on that foot. Um, so, yeah. She gets into the papers for all sorts of reasons. Again, this is one where it says Marilyn toes the line for the last time. So this again is about the six toe scandal. Um, saying that the way she posed deliberately hid the fact she had six toes and nothing of the kind. There's a review of a play version of Itch. More photos. Uh, this is the an article about the James Haspel book, the very first one, which was The Ultimate Look of the Legend. I was Marilyn Shadow. So beautiful photographs. These photographs had not been published anywhere prior to this article and this book, apart from that one. Uh, maybe a few of them but uh, so for instance the, this one this one this one <laughs> a few of the others were taken by uh, James Haspel or by members of the Munro Six who were this group of teenagers that followed her around New York in the late 50s loved it loved that book it's a beautiful book and again here and there's a picture of James I've actually met James I met him in New York in 1999 but I'm more about that when we get to the 1999 scrapbook and we have one called the seven year itch this was Daily Mirror, October the 24th. Again, this is about Jim Haswell's book, The Ultimate Look at the Legend, and um, how he discovered her, why he loved her, and, and all sorts of other things. And it's a nice little, nice little article. A bit about Billy Wilder on this page, um, which came from a bigger article about him, which I didn't keep. Here we have um, a, a brochure, or the inside of a brochure, for Marilyn's videos, that probably came out in the 80s, actually, because this that's when they, these ones came out, about 87, 88. Dead Rich is about the richest celebrities of the year. So I think it's Elvis's top. And Marilyn is the only woman in the top 10 that year, which I still believe is 92. So I got a nice set of pictures of Marilyn. I thought I'd uh, use some of them up. Then we have an article that says the truth behind Monroe's murder, which uh, is a matter of to believe. Confession of Mafia Godfather, who also ordered the killing of Kennedy. And that's basically saying that Jack, Sam Giancana ordered the murder of both of them. Which isn't likely, but there you go. So I'm sorry about the light shining on it. It is just uh, unfortunate at the moment. It's that time of day where the lights need to be on. Again, how Mafia Hitman murdered Marilyn, it carries on. Picture of the hearse leaving her house, her bedroom, and so on. Next one is Dexational. This is from the Sunday Magazine, March 8th, 1992. Um, some previous unpublished photos. Um, but the main article, reason for the article this was Some Like It Hot. Um, the role of Sugar was being recreated on stage by Tommy Steele. Not by Tommy Steele, he obviously played, um, he didn't play, obviously, Sugar, uh, an actress named Mandy Perryman did. Um, but it was all about uh, that, so... Some Like It Hot opens at the Prince Edward Theatre. Didn't last for very long. And some lovely photographs of her here. And then here's uh, an article on, said, Mandy Perryman, saying gentlemen for this blonde. Of her dressing up as Marilyn. Her hair is darker. She's not really trying to look like Marilyn and the character's not Marilyn's. She does look very good actually in, in the 1920s costumes. If I can I'll just show you this. Yeah, I think she looks quite good in that costume. But it was a completely different um, production than the original film because uh, it, there was more singing and dancing in it. It wasn't the actual. <coughs> A story of you know uh, some like it hot as we know it. it it was an adaptation next one is some like it wild this was Kim Wilde who came back with a hot new look that was reported to be very similar to Marilyn's <clears throat> and then fans pay big money for stars autograph and Marilyn will be mentioned in there uh, somewhere Uh, a signed photograph of her relaxing on the beach with Tony Curtis on sale for 2500 So that would have been during the making of something like it hot. On this one we have, uh, again, autographs. And pretty much the rest of the page, other than a bit here about Madonna. And here, 
various obviously little bits and look likes and stuff is about the Susan Strasberg book Marilyn and Me Sister Rivals Friends which also came out in 92 so this is a claim that Martha Miller made that the Strasbergs poisoned Marilyn and this is a Susan Strasberg's story of some of her memories of Marilyn that's been ad adapted from her book her book is definitely worth a read it's a lovely book so and some nice pictures too uh, again, two more pictures of Marilyn. They were from the Susan Strasberg article, so I wanted to include them that one. Definitely was. Yes, it was. And then we've got uh, one called Marilyn's Men, because in 1992 a book came out called Marilyn's Men, um, so which focuses on her relationships with men, obviously. So we've got pictures of some of them up there, including her first husband, Jimmy, um, and Johnny Hyde, Orson Welles, and so on. And on here, Joe DiMaggio, and so on. Um, yeah, so that was that book, Jane Ellen Ways. Right, it's not a special book. Read it if you want to. I would, it's not something I would say you must read. I, I know Michelle Morgan couldn't finish it. <laughs> I remember rightly at the time, she said, I just couldn't finish it. It wasn't what I wanted to read about her. Because uh, there was more to Marilyn than just her relationship with men. Um, again, this is part two of Marilyn's Men. So... Picture of Arthur Miller, picture of what they think she might have looked like now, and so on, and an order form for the Marion and the Kennedys video, which was from the 80s or the 90s. Yeah, it was from the same time actually, um, but I already had it. And on the back page, just another beautiful picture of our lovely Marilyn. So that is a book two of the Marilyn Monroe scrapbook collection. At the moment, we only have another 23 to go. And I haven't even finished with all my clippings either. So there's going to be a lot more episodes of this. So I hope you're enjoying it. If so, let me know. Leave a comment down below. Um, and the usual, like, comment, share and subscribe. And I'll see you all soon. Bye now.